We're back with another H5P video. We're looking again at the different activities that you can use in the Moodle LMS that involve the H5P interactive content. For this one, we are up to the multiple choice example. I'll show you what that looks like. But before that, my name is Chris Richter from rickshow.com.au. Please make sure you look at the courses that we have in the description. Check those out. There's some great courses there for the Moodle LMS. Let's select the multiple choice example in our course to see what the multiple choice activity looks like. It's quite simple. Which Empire Between song was in the top five of the European Songwriting Competition Open category in 2022? If you need to check those songs out, empirebetween.com slash YouTube music. That's actually my music that I recorded and wrote with one of my daughters who sings and writes lyrics as well. So check that out. But which song ended up in the top category? Then we have a collection of responses and we can choose only one of these and work out which one it actually is. So if I choose the first one and select check, it obviously tells me it's incorrect. It doesn't give me any more information here, but it does allow me to either show solution or retry. If I choose retry and do choose the correct song, it will show me it is correct. I'll get a star and I'll get one out of one. That is a multiple choice question created in H5P. How do we create it? Let's have a look. Jump back into our H5P demo. Go down to our experiments page and we're going to create a new H5P page. So H5P and we'll call this multiple choice experiments. Go down to our content bank where we create our H5P. Select add and we're looking for multiple choice down here. multiple choice and we'll give it a name multiple choice experiment fix up the typo there we go multiple choice experiment so the question is uh, for our question we're just going to say what format can which of these formats which of these formats can you export In using Adobe Illustrator. So that's our question. And it's multiple choice, remember, so they can choose more than one answer, or they can choose from a collection of answers, and there can be more than one correct answer as well. For this one, let's say they choose PNG, it's a file type, which is a correct one, JPG. Is another file type. Another one is SVG. And another one, another file type could be DOCX. And another file type could be XLS. So out of those, the correct answers are actually SVG, JPG, and PNG, but not DOCX or XLS because that's a spreadsheet and that one's a document. There are different choices that we've given every, given everybody and we've ticked the ones that are correct. So it's three out of five. We can put in tips and feedback for every question as well. So if you'd like to put a, a hint for the user, so if they're not sure what this is, we could say this is a spreadsheet. And for this one, we could put in as a tip text. This is a Word document. Just so you can see what that looks like. We also have the option of putting in a message, a response. If they, if they select this answer, this is the response they get. Message displayed if it's not selected. So message will appear below the answer on check if the answer is not selected. So there's the option to put those in as well. Experiment with those because you'll find that quite interesting. In some cases, it's really, really useful. Okay, down to the bottom, we have here a way of providing feedback depending on what the result is or what the score range is. Remember, we're talking about 100%. And if we look at our questions, we had one, two, three that were correct. Three out of five. So out of the three, if they get one correct, it'll be 33%. If they get two correct, it will be 66%. And if they get all correct, it will be 100%. Or well, 66.6666, but you know what I mean. So you can put a score range in to show that if they only got one of those correct, you can choose add range and put 34% in there because that means they got one right uh, or 67% if you want to jump to the you know they've still got one left to get and you can put in some feedback to say there's still one more to go or you missed one or something like that 
Uh, it's up to you, but I'll get rid of those because we're not going to look at it at the moment. The behavior settings, you may have seen the retry button, you can turn that off. The show solution button, you can turn that off too if you like. Now select the look and behavior of the questions. So multiple choice checkboxes or single choice radio buttons. We'll leave it on automatic because we have multiple answers that are correct. It really should be a checkbox rather than a radio button. Uh, give one point for the whole task, which you can do. And that just means that when it's graded, it gives it a, a single point rather than giving it 100%. Randomize the answers, which is what you normally do anyway. Require an answer before the solution can be reviewed or can be viewed. That's pretty normal in this type of activity. They must have a go at it first before they get the option to, to view the answers. Then there is a dialog box. To, you know, are you sure you want to check this retry that can be displayed as well? And generally don't use this one because it uh, causes issues with accessibility. So we leave that. The pass percentage is 100% meaning they got them all correct. And show score points, we can leave that there. The last thing you can do is you can also change all of the buttons or the responses or the labels of the buttons to anything that you like or something that makes more sense to you. So all of the information or all of the response messages and things can be changed here and reworded if you need to. Let's save and display and see what we did. Here we go. Which of these formats can you export in Adobe Illustrator? And notice we've got a tooltip over here. It tells us this is a Word document and this is a spreadsheet. So that's sort of a bit of a hint that the other ones are probably the right documents. But if we get it wrong and check, it shows we got a plus one for each of those and a minus one for this one. So that means we didn't get 100%. In fact, we only got 33%. Or one third is our actual correct. Yes, we got two correct, but because we got one wrong, it takes one off of that. That's just how it works. Sort of clever. Then we have the show solution or retry. We'll go retry, go SVG, PNG, JPG. Notice that they reordered the order them was random. If we go check and we got them all correct, we get our 33, our three out of three, not 33, as our correct answer. So that's perfect. Let's close that up. Remember, it's called Multiple Choice Experiments. Go back to our H5P page, choose the package file, and go to Multiple Choice Experiments. Select this. So that's being added to this H5P page. We choose Save and Display. We now have our Multiple Choice Experiment with all the options and the same thing with Check and Show Solution. Please answer before viewing the solution. So I have to try an answer. So I do have to retry try at least one before it will let me show solution. When you click show solution, it shows you over on the right hand side the ticks next to the ones that are actually correct. To show you what is correct, then you can retry and try and mark those off yourself. That's all we had to do with the multiple choice experiments. I hope you found that useful and learned something out of that. There's some fantastic H5P activities that we can also add. So check out some more videos that will have coming up or check out the previous ones on H5P. I hope you've learned something. My name is Chris Richter, ricochet.com.au. I'll talk to you again very soon.